Well, today is Monday, and since I'm not that far off the coast that leads to Olivine, I am going to head back to the ground portion of Route 40, because Monica of Monday is here. It's day sibling number five, and she's going to give me yet another useless type boosting item. Actually, I don't know. It might actually be useful for my team, but I wouldn't put too much money on that. So anyway, this is going to be the fifth one, and the last two, as I recall, are located in... There's one at the Lake of Rage, and there's another one in Blackthorn City. As a token of our friendship, we just met for the first time! How can there be any friendship between two, two complete strangers? But I just got a free item, even if it's not one that's useful. It's the sharp beak for flying type moves. And back then, there was no aerial ace, no air slash, no brave bird. There was only wing attack back then. I'm not kidding. Well, there's not much of a difference between wing attack and aerial ace, except aerial ace never misses, even through... Uh, sand Veil and stuff, and even Double Team and Minimize for in-game, so Aerial Ace naturally holds the advantage, but for, but for the rest, Wing Attack is essentially the same thing. Not that it excuses the, the absolute lack of power of uh, Aerial Ace, it's still only 60 power. So do you understand now why Brave Bird is so common among Pokémon that don't get Drill Pick? Yeah, I forgot about Drill Pick, but it's so uncommon, even these days. Imagine in the second generation, the only ones I can think of that had it were... Fero, Dodrio, and Zapdos. That's about it. There are probably others, but they don't really... I, I don't know if there were any others, because... To be honest, I was never a big fan of um, anything else than Zapdos when it came to Drill Peck users. But I digress, so I just healed my team and deposited the Sharp Beak since I happened to be in the vicinity and my team was starting to get a little low on PP, especially when it came to uh, electric type moves. Uh, Lapras and Gengar were completely out, so. Uh, I just uh, refreshed them a little. Anyway, there's a small portion of Route 41 left to explore. I explored the, the whole outer belt around the, the World Islands in the last videos, but now I gotta go inside that belt. There's a, a cross-shaped area inside the, which I can access, and there are probably a few trainers there, so I'm gonna beat them up. And after that, it's on to Cyanwood City. By the way, I've been ranting lately about things not to do on my channel, and if you followed my recent activity box, then you've already seen it, but during the Mega Man Marathon, I reached 600 subscribers. But the guy who nailed number 600 the first time around wasn't the sharpest tool in the box, to be honest. Remember how I said not to claim first comments and not to, to spam my inbox with useless crap? Well, this guy managed to break the diarrhea dial. He actually sent me a private message bragging about how he was subscriber 600. Guess what? No one gives a shit. Oh, and by the way, you're not subscriber 600 anymore because I just blocked you! I mean, when I say something, does it go inside one ear and it comes out the other one? Because else, if you pay attention to what I say, then why are you still doing it? Anyway, that's enough for now because I'm starting to get pissed off just talking about it. Now, there's something I would like to ask of you if you know where to look, else it doesn't really matter either way. But there's a small problem I'm having with this LP, it's that Mount Mortar is coming up rather soon. There's not much left to do. Cyanwood City, the Cyanwood Gym, then Jasmine, then we're going into Mount Mortar. The problem with Mount Mortar is that, well, usually I trust the Cerebee's Poke Earth for my map needs, but the maps that are in the Poke Earth for Mount Mortar are blatantly inaccurate. I don't know where he got those maps, but that is clearly not how Mount Mortar looks. I've compared the maps 
to a, a few videos on YouTube, and they just don't correspond to each other. And yes, I know there are more accurate maps on GameFAQs, but the problem is that they are nearly impossible to read. You can't tell what's a strength boulder, what's a ledge you can jump off of, what's a wall. It's just a huge mess. So if anyone has maps like those in Cerebi's Poke Earth, except that they actually represent Mount Mortar, if anyone knows where to look, I would be very, very grateful for that. And I'm aware that I need a waterfall in order to get into the deeper areas of Mount Mortar, the one where you can get the Tyro if you beat uh, that one black belt, which incidentally is the same black belt from the fighting dojo in Red, Blue and Yellow. That's what I'm being told anyway, this is the same guy. So while I do need Waterfall to get there, there's still a ton of loot I can get without Waterfall, and it's really the loot that interests me for now. Well, I'm probably going to have to have to put some stuff I could use into, um, into the PC box, but that's the price to pay to be able to bring back all that loot in one go, instead of going in and out and in and out and getting lost risking getting lost rather that many times. Anyway, we're almost done with Route 41 for now. Oh, a Gyarados at this point? I'm a bit surprised. I mean, most of the stuff I've seen is stuff like Staryu and Psyduck and Golding, but Gyarados? Well, to be honest, this is the generation where Gyarados really, really suck. Back in the first generation, it was okay, because it had a decent special attack, which was the same as its special defense back then, so it could use Surf and Ice Beam and those other special moves rather effectively. But when the special stats flip hit, Gyarados' special attack went down the drain, down to a pitiful 60. So, Sir, Ice Beam, all that kind of stuff, it's now completely out of the question. The problem is that Gyarados' physical move pool is almost zilch in Generation 2. You had the... Um, you had the return, and that's honestly all I can think of. I'm sure it had no Earthquake back then, no Rock Slide. Heck, it still doesn't have Rock Slide. It does no Stone Edge, though, so that's a non-issue now. But still, if you plan on using a Gyarados in Generation 2, do it. Do so, but as an HM Slave, because it can learn Sir, Whirlpool, Waterfall, and can it learn Strength by any chance? Anyway, that's the only possible use for a Gyarados in this generation. Don't waste a team slot for something that attacks so weakly. And yes, I know you get a free shiny in the end generation 2, but that is the extra kick in the nuts that makes it even more insulting. The good news though is that in Hard Gold and Soul Silver though, it has such a huge variety of physical moves and it's got Dragon Dance to go along with it, that and Taunt and all kinds of good stuff that make it into one of the most dominant powerhouses in the game, and on top of that you get a free shiny for that instead of the crummy Gold Silver Crystal rendition. Oh, is this the guy that helps me with the gyms? Well, I say help loosely, but yeah, it does look like it. And in this gym, everything's of the fighting type, so it's going to be an easy Alakazam sweep. Again, because the last gym was pretty much the same thing too. Everyone was obliterated by, uh, by Alakazam, because remember that Gengar is a poison type? No matter what you may hear on certain sites, Gengar is a poison type, so you might do well to remember that. Well, it doesn't absorb toxic spikes, but neither do Crobat and Weezing, and everyone knows those two are poison types anyway. But that's besides the point. I'm going to finish this video by healing my team one more time, and then we're going to check out Cyanwood City in the next video, and there's going to be a surprise battle that's only for Crystal players.